out in a smoky bar Didn't have much sense or bread It's a jam-packed 90 minutes of fun and great music. It's a new musical, which is first and foremost what's really exciting about it. Everyone gets kind of rigged over the coals at a certain point in time. There is, n there is not an anti-smoking nor is there a pro-smoking agenda with this show. This is really about uh, people trying to figure out how to cope with their own inadequacies. Are we out of nicotine gum? Sorry, honey, I ate the last part when I got up this morning. Pam is the titular last smoker in America. We live in a time in this play where smoking has become punishable by various laws, uh, including at a certain point jail time, and uh, Pam absolutely cannot kick the habit. My goal is really to make sure that everything she's doing is based out of a real human need so that everybody can relate to her. Nobody is stressing for the straight white man. Ha! Some great tunes that we get to just really rock out on. I get to sing like Steve Tyler, you know, from Aerosmith. It's a big old rock musical. <laughs> Jimmy is looking for someone to be invested in his life. The master dog of Gongazath! Life is not a video game! He has to find some kind of acceptance through anything else he can find, which winds up being an identity crisis with his, with his black phase. I had a dream that I'd be black! Blackity black, 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 black! All right, y'all, check it out. Straight out of Compton, here we go! Wicked, wicked, woo! I came up with this idea. Uh, I am often drawn to writing about outcasts, and I always feel so sorry for those smokers huddled in the cold outside their office buildings. And I had a good friend who swore she would be the last smoker in America. So all of that came together. Have a very nice tobacco free day. Smokers think the show is about them, and anti-smokers think it's about them. And I'm, I'm happy that there is that kind of ambiguity about it, and that both sides find something in the issue. Phyllis is the next door neighbor, the nosy next door neighbor. Um, she's a social butterfly. She's, you know, that neighbor that you always see in the sitcoms. It's in everybody's business. Sorry, no time to talk. I'm late for a student conference. Oh, Pammy, sweetie, I need a hand. You can't tell me you're too busy, man, the trenches, this is war time! She also had a problem with nicotine and other substances, <laughs> and used to carry on back in the day with Ernie, and she found Jesus, which is how she quit smoking and all of the other vices that she had, and now her vice is Jesus. Let the Lord be your addiction as I have made him mine. Oh. in America is what happens when the government has too much control? You have to come see to see what I'm talking about. <laughs> if our lungs could only talk the man he knows to say. It's a farce and on one level it hasn't got a serious bone in its body, but it does have a subversive take on civil liberties, which is kind of cool at the same time. So it's, it's a lot of fun. These actors, it's like falling in love for the first time. They're, they, are, they are so good. It's been a total collaboration with the actors. And the goal is that it's a little bit more unexpected and outrageous. It's a lot of fantasy numbers, you know, so hopefully something that's just a lot of fun and kind of like, oh, I didn't see that coming. I think people should come see The Last Smoker in America because it will be one of the most fun evenings they will have in a long time, I can promise that. And uh, in addition, I think it'll keep them talking for a long time after, and I think that's the part that's going to surprise them. There's a lot uh, buried between the lines. It's about so much more than smoking. Not dear.